Hey, what's up guys? It's Cypher from CypherPika.com and today I am bringing you a very unique Magicka Nightblade PvP build. Now some disclaimers before I get into this. Uh, I did take some inspiration from of this build from Kina. He is a well-known uh, Magicka Nightblade. Uh, but most of it is just things that I felt like trying out and it seemed to work decently well. Like enough. This build is not for everybody. I'm telling you right now that if you um if you're not very good at PvP, or if, or if you're trying to get into Magic and Nightblade, this is not the build to get into. It's very hard to play. It's not ideal for every situation. But the thing about this build is it's very tricky in the sense that opponents don't really know what they're going up against because not a lot of people are running something like this, and it can catch people off guard. It has crazy potential burst damage while still sustaining and having a lot of uh, healing over time. So you'll see the build and the abilities. You might say, hey Cypher, why aren't you running this or that? Well, the thing is, this isn't this isn't like a meta build. I'm not trying to make the strongest, craziest magic and nightblade. This build is just fun for me to play, and it's interesting. And you know, if you watch the PvP video that I just posted about this build, you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's get into it. This is a sword and board destro. Magicka Nightblade Heavy Armor Built. Sword and Board Bar. We got Impale for the Execute. You're going to definitely need this to finish targets off. You don't have too much burst damage. So you will slowly wither down your opponents and finish them off with Impale. Swallow Soul is going to be our cheap, spammable DPS ability. It's also going to give us heal over time. And 8% increased healing, which is really important for this build. Lotus Fan. Gap closer, dot, snare, you're going to need this. Mass Hysteria, Fear, it's going to be our main CC. Merciless Resolve is going to give us a little bit more burst damage and additional damage on top of that with the Spectral Bow and the 8% uh, Minor Berserk. Soul Harvest is going to be your main bread and butter ultimate. It's also going to give you a lot of ultimate while you're killing opponents, which will help you because we are using Destro Ultimate on the back bar. Uh, Soul Harvest gives you a 20% damage boost after activating it for 6 seconds. It also reduces your opponent's healing by 31%. 30% and then a little bit of a boost from other sources. And whenever you kill somebody, you get 10 ultimate while using Soul Harvest. So this is your main sword and board DPS bar. Back bar. We're running Destro. Here's where things get a little bit more interesting. We're running the Destro ultimate, Eye of the Flame. Siphoning attacks for Magicka and Stamina Sustain. Refreshing path for heal over time, also a little bit of extra damage if your opponents are fighting you in your path. Mirage. The reason we went with Mirage instead of Double Take is because we need that extra physical and spell resist. Plus, we already have two other sources of um, major mobility. What's it called? Major Expedition. We have two other sources. We have an offensive source from Crippling, Crippling Grasp, which is giving us, giving us a nice damage over time, and uh, Root plus Snare. And we have a defensive source from Refreshing Path. So going with double take would be overkill. You already have two other ways to get major expedition, a defense a defensive source and an offensive source. Now here is, you know, an ability slot that you can pretty much put whatever you want here. I put Reaper's Mark. Not mark target, Reaper's Mark. It's a diff it's a different morph. Uh, it gives you more healing when you kill an opponent and this is pretty important. This is going to be your only burst heal you have on this build. So if you get really low on health the best way to get your health back up is to kill somebody who's marked from your reaper not only that after you kill somebody you gain major berserk which gives you 25 percent bonus damage for five seconds that's gonna cause a chain reaction you kill somebody you have more damage you can kill another person remark them then you get more damage so on and so forth um the thing that's important here is reaper's mark is like it's an ability slot that you can put whatever you want. You don't have to put Reaper's Mark. There's other options that you can put here. If you want to run Cloak, you can run Cloak. There's other options. Now, you might be saying, where is the spell damage? Well, we are running Rattle Cage on this build. Uh, before I get into the armor sets, I just want to show you the synergy here. The reason why this, this build, it doesn't have extremely high spell damage or extremely high max Magicka. But it still has a lot of damage output when played properly. Because of the fact that Merciless Resolve gives us... Minor Berserk, that's 8% bonus damage. 
Soul Harvest gives us 20% additional damage. That is not a major or minor buff. It is on its own 20%. So that's 20%, 8%. On the back bar, we have Reaper's Mark, which gives us major Berserk when we kill somebody. That's 25% bonus damage. So we're talking huge amount of bonus damage. 8%, 20%, and 25%. When all that is stacked, your damage goes through the roof. And you will hit extremely hard, even with a lack of spell damage and max magicka, you will hit extremely hard. Um, so, let's get into the armor sets really quickly. The armor sets are definitely, definitely interchangeable. I've played this build with a variety of different sets. And um, this has been my favorite so far, but sometimes I go for Scoria for bonus damage. Uh, we are running five pieces of Fasalas. The reason I'm running this is because this build doesn't have too much burst. So you need to be able to have sustained damage um, on your opponents. And one way to do that is by to reduce their healing. If you're going against a Stam Sork, you stay inside their Hurricane. They're never going to get outside of that Fasala debuff. Um, people who are attacking you constantly or AoEing you, they're going to be debuffed as well. Templars who are attacking you also debuffed. This is going to be the main way to kill people without fasalas it's very hard to pull this build off because of the fact that you don't have burst so you need another source of pressuring your opponents and getting them low enough for an impale execute and fasalas is a trick for me now the rest of the sets are actually completely interchangeable completely interchangeable you could run for the two piece right now i'm running troll king which increases your healing and also gives you a huge burst of health recovery this is like Malabeth 2.0, uh, but it's not as visible, and it, it's not bugged like Malabeth is. Uh, so it's nice health recovery, considering that we don't have a huge burst heal or a reliable burst heal. Uh, it's definitely something that you should consider using, um, especially if you can't manage your health. I've also ran Scoria with this build, and that has given me some extreme burst damage. It's given me a lot of damage. Um, so Scoria is very nice as well. I'm pretty sure Grothdar could work and some other options also can work. But Troll King is a set that I've kind of fallen back on and I think is the way to go. Uh, in the PvP video, I use Scoria as well. And you can see how that's effective because it gives you, with all the dots you're running, uh, you get a lot of burst damage out of it. So that's just one option. Now we're also running Rattle Cage. Now, Rattle Cage is definitely interchangeable. You don't have to run Rattle Cage. There's other options for you out there. I recently tried the Hist set, uh, but unfortunately, I realized that the Hist is actually uh, garbage for this build. It's actually just a garbage set in general. The way it works is very counterproductive of what a skilled PvP player should be achieving. It only works when you get CC'd and you don't have enough stamina to CC break or you know if you force yourself in the CC, but that's... Very, very counterproductive. I was hoping this set could work as far as giving me health back. I thought I could get health back from roots and snares and whatnot, but that's not the case. It only works while you are CC'd. And I try to avoid being CC'd at all costs, so this set just didn't work for me. But there are other options. You don't have to use Construct. Uh, I mean, you don't have to use Rattle Cage. You can use Crafted Sets. You can use Seducer if you want to. You can use just a damage-oriented set, um, Burning Spell Weave. Whatever you want to use, you can, you can use it. You can you can work into this build. Um, it's very flexible in that in that department. I just like Rattle Cage because it eliminates the need for a spell damage buff, and it allows me to run Reaper's Mark, which is even more damage against my opponents, and the burst major berserk if I kill them. Sword and board sharpened, reinforced. I think we are running impen on everything. Uh, the helmet and the shoulder are sturdy. Five pieces impen on the body. Uh, reinforced shield, sharpened sword. Jewelry, we got spell damage, cost reduction, cost reduction. We're in heavy armor, so the cost reduction is really important. We're running an, an, a Fasala's Inferno Staff, sharpened. The poisons we are running are the Drain Health Poisons. The reason you want to run this is because it's, this is just another source of getting health returned. You, as you can see, we have a lot of ways to get health back. We have Reaper's Mark, we have Swallow Soul, we have Drain Health Poisons, we have Refreshing Paths, we have Potions, Troll King, which is going to give us health recovery. So all these different ways to get health back, really good for the build, and it gives you some insane sustain, because you don't have to worry too much about your health, your health is just passively regenerating. So that's the armor. Uh, let's get into champion points really quickly. 
Seems like I have two to spend right here. I'll just put them in uh, increase healing. Okay, so we have 95 points into Magician, which is going to reduce the Magicka cost of abilities. We have 37 points into Magical Recovery. Not really needed. I might take some of these out, considering our Magical Recovery is only 700. So I might take these out and put them into more Tumbling or Shadow Ward. Shadow Ward, reduce block cost, Tumbling, reduce CC break, and Befoul, increase the, the effectiveness of heal reduction abilities. 22 into Bless for extra healing, 33 into Elfborn, 81 into Elemental Expert, 29 into Spell Erosion. Nothing here, because we don't really do too many light and heavy attacks. 22 th into Thaumaturge for the dots we're running. 5 into Spell Shield, 7 into Resistance. You really want this passive. It's very important. This is another way to get health back, by the way. This passive right here is very important. Resource 321 health when you're hit by a critical attack. This doesn't have a cooldown as well. You constantly get health when you get crit. Hardy, 51. Elmo the Defender, 42. Big Skin, 12. 7 into Quick Recovery. So, basic CP layout. Nothing too crazy. Let's get into the stat sheet. We're using the Thief Mundus for extra crit. That's going to give us crit damage and crit heals. Really important. 37.6k uh, max Magicka. 28.7k maximum health. About 15k maximum stamina, 733 recovery. You see, you see the stats right here. Not too much to explain. We are a high elf, but in my opinion, the best race for this build is Breton. You don't necessarily need the recovery or the flame damage on high elf. I think the Breton cost reduction and the elemental resistance or the resistance is more important. But I don't want to switch back and forth between High Elf and Breton because there's builds that I play on Magic and Nightblade that prefer High Elf over Breton. This is one of those builds that prefer Breton. Uh, so that's the way to go. Um, if you guys have any questions about this build, like I said, this is a very, you know, unique, different type of build. I don't recommend it if you're new to the game or if you don't know what you're doing with Magic and Nightblade. I might upload something a little bit different for, that's a little easier to play or pull off. Uh, but for now, thank you guys so much for watching. I updated the builds on my website. Almost all the builds that I posted, I think all of them that I've posted recently are on the website now, cypherbeacon.com. So go check out the website for more builds. This one will also be posted on the website. And if you want to see this build in action, I posted a 1VX video of this build on my YouTube channel. That should be live by the time this video goes up. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cypher, and I'll see you guys next time.